Hey, g'day, guys. Welcome back to Behind the Scenes. I'm your host, Summer Helene. We are on with the bad bear, my co host, Bear Fjorda, and our special guest, Joshua Fabia. I said that right, right? Joshua Fabia. Fabia. Oh. Son of a bitch. Oh, he said I had it right. It Sorry. Down. I had okay. it down. For All right. I'm going to put money oh in the swear jar. He had it. My bad. I knew it. Okay. You, you win. He wins. You win. All right. You win. You, you got win. It. Oh, Fantastic. Damn, I hate when I lose. I'm just so not used to it. <laughs> okay, so now for anyone checking in, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Uh, Joshua Fabia is a health professional. He works with a group and runs a group called uh, the School Self Self Awareness. Online, he was involved with Diego Sanchez. That has created a huge controversy. Uh, people online have been jumping on him. People either love him or hate him. He's incredibly controversial, which I know has to be really hard for you. Um, and people have really extreme feelings, I mean, good and bad, about you. So I'd love to hit on that. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you and welcome to the show. Um, what's come out most recently... Uh, we'll go into in just a minute. Is there anything you want to start with to say to everyone out there? No, just thank you for having me on the show. And um, yeah, I appreciate everyone's time and energy listening. Yeah. Okay. Now, how do you feel about your relationship now with Diego Sanchez and the experience you've had with the UFC since meeting Diego in 2019? Well, well <clears throat> in the beginning... I would say it was just a normal client uh, training type relationship and everything in my perception of reality was that Diego Sanchez is a professional MMA fighter who is employing me to help him as he has a lot of healing necessary and wanting to change his point of view on how to do things a little differently because in the past he had been kind of just willing to run into punches and I was offering him another option. Like we can move out of the way first, you know, and this was all very interesting to him and the relationship seemed very normal. Like everything else in uh, my career and my business, I deal with, lots and lots of people. Everything seemed pretty normal. Um, Diego was definitely a celebrity. You know, he had some celebrity asshole tendencies. You know, he didn't like tipping and he did some weird stuff in front of me that, you know, threw up some red flags. But over time, just talking to him, it kind of just seemed, like I said, the celebrity what stuff. Do you, or, what do you mean weird stuff? Well, I just mean things like, you get a divorce and you have a child, but you get a one bedroom condo. Like it doesn't, it, things just didn't make sense to me, but I'm thinking, you know, okay, he's got his own plans. He knows what he's going to do. I, I mean, maybe it's just super temperate. Like, I don't know, you know? And, um, I'm wondering why is he driving around a $3,000 Mercedes? Right. Like just questions that throw up flags. But I'm thinking, hey, he's telling me he's frugal. He's saving his money. He's OK. You know, OK. Hey, um, well, that, that's so everything. That's a good, something. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go. If you have more to say, please, by all means. Well, I just mean like from everything on the outside as a trainer that's seeing somebody three days a week and then I start to. I mean, I moved him into the condo. I helped him in the divorce and this, this little moment. And, you know, everything seemed pretty much the same as anybody else and under these circumstances to a certain degree. I added right, in some me, extra real variables. Quick, Joshua, do you mind? Or, say that again? I was just saying, excuse me. I, I, this is actually a really interesting point you bring up because now that you're saying that it's kind of like uh, some odd behaviors, as you're stating from Diego's side, it kind of throws up the question, well, how much was both your decision and his decision? And one of the things people tend to ask a lot about these days is that small clip you guys put up of you uh, having Diego hang from the uh, from the A-frame or the bars and essentially using him as a punching bag. So it's kind of the question of, was that more his decision, your decision, and what was the method of, tr of training behind that? Okay. Those are several questions and they're all 
very easy to answer. Let me work backwards, though. The first one you said, what is the method? Well, you can go on to YouTube right now and go look at body hardening, and you will see some of the most ridiculous uh, things way beyond what you see me doing. What I was doing are, are gentle in comparison to what you will see others doing, okay? It's a very normal practice, body hardening. Um, the other it- part of it is it's teaching... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, well, the complaints online with it are usually that when you're doing the body hardening, it's not uh, done towards the head. So I think it had more to do with the, the uh, them can, being concerned that he already had CTE and then getting smacked in the head versus the body hardening. Yeah. So, I mean, Conor McGregor is really well known for doing the body hardening and he does some dumbass shit. I'd like to remind everyone, yeah. every time we swear on this show, we give money to the Boys and Girls Club of America, the Humane Society of America, and free MMA. We swear because we care. We, we had to put that disclaimer hey. in because I can't control my mouth. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. <laughs> so the reality is, okay, that's beautiful for McGregor to say, but he also just got knocked the fuck out. So your body hardening, what it does... Let me just give you perspective here from someone who's not involved in combatives or has no idea what is truly going on. The body has an ability to perceive the angle and the direction of impact. Okay, the body. The way the body perceives this is through contact first. So if I am to, for example, push you, your body can can understand the direction where I'm going to push you. If now I pull away, I'm not touching you. I'm showing you the push. Your body can anticipate and will move out of the way. All right. Now what happens when I do it with a fist? So what you're seeing there is, for one, 50 times out of context, and I will explain yeah. all of that. Yeah, of but course. the point is, that in body hardening, you could not favor one part of the body, Summer, as every part of your body is vulnerable. So to balance that, you wouldn't be so ashamed to have your face touched. And so what's really going on is that, because I am not hitting him hard enough to damage anything, not even surface tissue. And the reality is he's been trained to handle much, much, much harder impacts than that. And what is happening in that is not training. Are you guys, I mean, like, do you, do you see how ridiculous that narrative setup is? Um, no, the truth is that video was leaked by who? It's the highest production fucking video I've ever had done. You think it's the UFC? Yeah, it's the fucking UFC that came and filmed us <laughs> and didn't say a fucking word about, oh, that looks dangerous. No, they're cheering us on and they love it. And it's all fucking set up. It's all set up. I'll, I'll send you the video of the full amount of context because that's what I have to do is record everything. And you'll see them spraying him down with water. And it's a fucking shoot. It's a real Hollywood, man. It's fake. Well, and then so why would you? you all well, are, I, I... I, I work in Hollywood, so I'm, I'm very, very familiar with uh, those particular tactics. My question would then be, right. why do you think, um, if you feel that the UFC is setting you up, why would they be doing that? Oh, well, now we're getting somewhere. See, finally someone asked me the right questions. See, nobody's ever talking to me, for one, about any of the training that I do that is so scandalous, because nobody really wants to hear any of the answers. Just the same, nobody's been asking the correct questions because nobody in the MMA world wants those answers. So the truth well, is, I've, I've been privy to seeing some things, one, that are behind the scenes and are of an industry that is very ugly and very dirty. And because I'm not in the industry and I have no benefit of the industry, I'm the only one willing to speak upon it. Because I'm not part of the feeder system and I make no money off of this and I'm not over here being a person that promotes violence or even endorses this sport or industry. I just happen well, to be helping what would a be guy some of the that happen to be an MMA that fighter. That they're trying to push. Well, the, and I, I, can, I'm try, I want to grasp the, the concept here real quick. What, what are some of the yeah, shady yeah, yeah. things that they're, kind of, that they're kind of pushing off as 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm either trying to so covering it I, up or maybe I know we're jumping quickly yeah, between bit. questions. I know we're jumping quickly no, no, between no, no, questions, but we yeah, yeah, we I'm don't gonna, have yeah. I'm going to bring it all together. So so what we got here is we got to go back to how I was starting with my perception. And see, my perception is I'm helping a guy, and he leaves a gym. It becomes a big scandal. I'm just all, all of a sudden in the middle of a lot of drama, and I'm just worrying about taking care of this guy. And the more I'm taking care of him, the more I'm realizing he needs a lot more help than some of my other clients. Like, this is pretty heavy. And um, as I'm doing this and I'm being his trainer and his coach and, and his manager, I'm now at the fight, one of the fights, the first fight that I'm the only coach and cornerman at the UFC for Diego. They pull me away from him behind the scenes before the fight three different times to harass me about every little thing I'm doing. Well, then, why, why would the UFC, why would the UFC have a grudge against you? No, no, I'm, I'm getting there. I got to just tell you my perception of what the events that happen here. Right. So I, I, what's the, happening, so I, I get what you're saying, but there are so many questions. I'm, I'm just curious. Um, I, I, I do want to hear the perception. It's something but, that's been going on for two years. You got to let me tell you this to understand some things. So this moment happens where the Nevada State Commission comes in and leans on Diego and he has to throw a fucking fight. Now, I have them recorded coming so in. And then they so they are, you trying to say that, are you saying that he was told that he has to like he has to throw this fight? They told him he has to lose this bout? You go watch the fight, and it's the only fight in Diego Sanchez's that, history that he never threw a punch. That's not, that's not an answer. Like, uh, we're looking for a direct answer. Did they tell him he had to throw a fight? The way that they did it is in the lean, which is in talking to somebody and dangling their license and explaining, are you really trying to hurt this man? You're not trying to hurt him, are you, Diego? You're a sportsman, Diego. You've always been a good guy, Diego. You're not going to do anything with malicious intent, are you, Diego? That, so that, you, can, you can call that the way you call it, but the Nevada State Commission is not supposed to come in 30 minutes before a fucking fight and come and kick everybody out and come and talk that type of shit to a fighter and get in their head. Then on top of it, the last time Diego was a sportsman, he was a wrestler. So the first thing he comes out and does is goes and takes this guy's leg. And this, he never throws a punch. So you tell me, how come my fighter that's been trained for 10 weeks to strike didn't throw a strike? Uh, I, I, I can't tell you, but you see now if what they I'm didn't, getting at. So that's, not at all. So... So well, I, I can probably elaborate on that a little bit in the sense that everyone, you know, being in the cage at such a high level, being in the cage at small levels, people are going to react differently. You've seen guys go out there. I'm sure you have at least uh, you study fights. I know you would have if you were trying to corner or coach this man. People will go out there and just blow, blow game plans, 100 percent fail them uh, just because they were either in the wrong headspace, wrong timing, maybe exactly. something happens them minutes prior to the bout. So and this uh, so is what you're saying that. is that and that's what part of the lean and this part of the lean in the UFC is fucking with the fake profiles, putting out the negative stuff and doing the thing. So in my perception, I was just in the wave of this. I kind of like am perceiving it. And so you see me in the history of everything I did. I go to bat for Diego because I am witnessing very strange things. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I'm feeling the UFC is giving me a weird rub from the very beginning. And now... If I fast forward you to now this separation, which is due to me leaving Diego because of me finding out new information. So what has happened is I am getting the process of finding out that we need to get the medical records from his ex-wife. Diego's in good communication with his ex-wife. I'm thinking, hey, go ahead. Get, go ahead and uh, ask her for him. Well, Diego, why, why would he need to get them from his ex-wife? The commission will send them straight to him. I mean, Jar Jared's the, a fighter, the, Bear's a fighter. They send him his own. The UFC 
has, has not they, sent us any of that, and that's they don't. Did, that's did they the not want to say that they's not responsible well, for that. I thought yeah, that, that he yeah, had to they were different. Like, like just summer. Let me explain. They don't want to give us give Diego any of the contact information to resource that, so making it easily. So what I, I doing can give that to you in like two seconds. It's it's Googleable. Well, that's great. I don't need it. You can give it to Diego. What my point is is that in the process of trying to get it from his ex-wife that Diego's saying he didn't even know she had it, which was all news to everybody, I, uh, Diego's in conversation with her asking for it, and she says, oh, you can have the lawyer ask for it. And that threw up some red flags. So I then am talking with Diego while he's texting her, and I said, type this, please. Let me see it. And I wrote, so for the record you're not going to release my medical records. And Why couldn't Diego says, get it himself, though? That, that's the thing. If, if, it's, if it's his own well, this body... Is again, this, this, exactly. This is the UFC running this game. But, and yet, but the UFC doesn't this have is, access to that. They have copies of everything as they have a log of everything that's ever put oh, down. Oh, yeah, for and sure. So when, but the com- when the commission... I ask for just a copy of anything that they've ever had, why is there such an issue? And then on top of it, then redirecting it to all these commissions and not giving out the information freely so, and making it a big scandal. And I've asked for it for over three months. I, I can tell you deal. when I went when I went to law so, school, can, um, okay. I, I, I would never have handed them out for them. It's it's the fact that they should just be able to give them. But let me please finish where I'm at, because I'm kind of getting to some points and you wanted the points. So I'm asking her. And then she finally says, uh, you know, she, she's like, oh, fuck you, Josh, you know, da, 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 da. And then Diego goes to go take his daughter to school or, or to the park or something. And she, uh, his ex-wife calls and Diego's talking to her. And then she's saying, oh, yeah, okay, I'll send it and, and da, 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 da. And she's I'm, like, I'm going to cut in, um, you seem okay. like a really nice guy, but this seems like a lot of minutia and it doesn't seem like you're directly answering our questions. And that's really difficult for me. I've worked in spin for a really long time. Well, and I'm one of the first signs of spin story. is the minutia. So I, I okay, get what you're well, saying. I sent you but the we have... email. So I sent you the email from yes. his ex-wife, Summer. You did. Go ahead and read it then. So I'm, I'm not reading to get that on to air. This point of where, where this email is sent to the UFC talking about Diego's mental instability in 2018. I did not start working with or working for Diego till 2019 in May. So by this time, I end up being the person associated to all this crazy as the UFC did not do anything for him, offer him any services as his wife is saying, we're so concerned. And then as I'm, as Diego is having mismatched fight, fight. Excuse, excuse me, Josh. When, when you open this up, where... when you open this up, you did say you want to elaborate on the split. Now, while this is all very pertinent to that, I'm sure a lot has influenced your decision. What was that defining moment? What? Because I'm sure it wasn't over medical records. You guys have been arguing I'm, about medical records now for the last year. What was this? Split no, no. Over? Do, do, do you not hold on? Hold on. Hold on. So I'm trying to explain my perception, and my perception of things it is one thing at one time. Now, all of a sudden, I find out that your ex-wife is talking personally to Dana White, Sean Shelby, Hunter, about your medical stuff, and nobody's told me anything. Nobody's warned me, said Diego's anything. And so what is now the feeling okay so so i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna cut this this is this is minutia people are writing in and what they're concerned about and and what they're trying to address is stuff like the only fans and him naked wrestling in a river like that's the stuff that people what are, are dumping you talking on about you. there's no naked wrestling in aruba there's no naked i said either. a river no and if you river, speak to me like that river. again i'm gonna hang up on you man like i'm i'm being polite to you i'm well, just I don't asking know for what straight you're answers even talking about what okay, on only a question here Okay. There is a perception that Diego Sanchez was not familiar with the kind of content you were putting up on OnlyFans. Is that true? Diego knows exactly what's on there, and you can go look. It's all just training. What is the problem? What about... Hold on. You're saying it's just training. How do you... You quote these, or someone quotes them. You guys have to approve them. So 
this is just training. Quotes like, you know you like that little type butt. What kind of training video is that exactly putting out there? I I like how you're in the media and you don't know that market. If you know the OnlyFans market... You bet market, your ass I would never sell a fighter like tra- that. I would never. I work for Paramount Pictures. I've worked on Guardians of the Galaxy. I've worked with fighters. I've worked for the WWE. I would never sell a fighter like that. That's why we're asking, and that's why people are concerned. Concerned. Concerned about playing with the tantalizing words to get people to no, look. No, people feel working. you're sexually exploiting Diego, and I'm trying to give you a platform to say you're not. That's the feeling yeah, on no, the I'm internet. Yeah, no, I'm not sexually exploiting him at all. At and, all. And that's, there's no and that's sexual what I'm... exploitation if there's no sexual videos or sexual anything of him out there. What are we talking about here? And this what? concept of talking about, like, I, again, I've been attacked nonstop, and you asked me to come on like you were going to listen, and I'm just trying to tell you stuff, I'm and I show you verified I'm trying to interview you, but you're not stuff. answering questions. When I get someone on and okay, I ask, ask them questions, questions you, I expect answers. What, what, what answers other question would you like to ask that, that I'm not answering? Uh, well, when we asked you, uh, the, one of the ones you For, specifically asked us to ask you. Yeah, I'm trying to express how I feel about what has happened in my time of two years of being slandered in the UFC, working for a guy that falsely represented himself as a regular person, as I get to more information as I'm with the lawyer and the lawyer talks to Diego and asks Diego about his education and, ed- and he starts talking about he was in special education. Holy shit, huge red flags, man. This is not at all what anyone has perceived. And, and Diego is not anywhere near what anybody knows, man. And Diego has been an addict. He hadn't told anybody for the past five months I was his sponsor living with him, that I had to live there because he was broke and lost all his money and, rag- and, and strung out on Kratom and alcohol and 30 other substances, that he, that he has sexual abuse issues. No, 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 he didn't say any of that, man. And I've been holding up all this. I've been doing everything. And everybody's coming at me. Then so what about the belief? So everyone, why so I'll we have put about it all out two, there. I'll put out all the proof. I got all the proof. I'll put out all the video, man. We, this we is have the funniest about part two about minutes. It. We have about two minutes left. The the biggest okay. concern and the public perception is that you were taking advantage of Diego. You were taking the money that he has CTE, and you Diego, were taking advantage of someone. Diego that is has the clearly perception. been taking advantage of me for two years. As I have been fighting for him and putting myself on the line for him with zero benefit, I'm the one He's getting been, death you, threats here. Like nobody you are. Else. Now, hold on. No one's starting to say, to say that you're not. You definitely have received death threats. You have a lot of hate in the media. Uh, you're, you're saying right now that he took advantage of you. I'm Something he very publicly said was he cut off Diego. family members to prove loyalty to you. If he's taking advantage of you, is that statement true? Did it really happen? Is he making that up? Or did he actually cut off family members in an effort to prove loyalty to I, you, sir? I don't know of any family members he's ever disowned i don't know any of that okay. the matter okay. of fact so is, that's spin the, that's, the, the, that's the spin truth in the media is, when when you were talking about this moment it was because it was feeling like i was going to be between him and his mother and i'm not going to do that and that that's one of the big red flags that and that diego is probably special needs he needed to be properly cognitively studied he never wanted to do any of that well he, he is he in a study now he is progress. in a study now so that is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, no, came- a brain study is one thing. Cognitive study and evaluation of other things to find out that the poor guy is not the same. Listen, we, I, we're in New Mexico, and if you're special needs in New Mexico, they just push you through school. So huh. let me tell you another secret that well, Diego actually, Sanchez where- didn't really want anybody to know. So Diego took steroids in high school to win the high school state wrestling. I, I got to say, we actually, he... we have to jump off. We're at the end of the show. Um, I appreciate okay. towards the end of the show, you really did start answering questions like point blank. Usually when we do the show, it's like a question answer, really point blank, but short answers. But you're me in 30 minutes, Summer. I'm sorry, but and that's, I mean, and come that's, on. No, and hold that's on. Show. Well, I, I'd be happy we, to have you on again, and I'll give you the whole hour. 
I'll, I will give you the whole okay, hour. please. Because usually we do thank a question you. answer. So I'd love to have you on again. We'll go through it again. Guys, I want to thank you for joining us. And our special guest, Josh Fabia. Fabia. God damn it. I'm going to get that right. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone every time I swear I give money to the Boys and Girls Club of America, the Humane Society of America, and Free MMA. I swear because I care. Thank you again to my co-host, Bear Fjorda. We'll see you next week. This is Behind the Scenes. Good night.